Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Perkins and today I'm talking to Gapreet Sidhu. Gapreet has just published her debut novel Storm. In this diabolically gripping thriller there's definitely more than meets the eye. Hi Gapreet, thank you for coming on Book Talk Radio Club. Hi Claire, thank you for having me. Sure. Gapreet, your book's tagline is It's a curse to remember. I'm hooked. Would you like to give Book Talk Radio Club's listeners a brief synopsis of Storm? Yeah, definitely. Um, Basically, um, it's about Evan Storm, who remembers his past reincarnations, and he wakes up every single morning, 3.30 a.m., remembering this, like, horrific moment of his past life with his wife, and he has no idea why these memories keep coming back to him, and he feels like there is, like, a bigger meaning behind um the memories that he's having everybody around him thinks that he's crazy Mm. he should just like drop the idea that there is something behind those memories but he's convinced that they mean something and then when he meets shadow hex that's when things begin to fall in place for him right but what but what he doesn't know is that being involved with shadow hex is going to put everybody else that he loves in danger. So that's what the main storyline is about. There's other, There are other two storylines that carry throughout the book, but that's the main one that follows through the series. The idea of our past life interfering with our current life is fascinating. What led you down this storyline? I know people that who do remember their past lives, and I'm the type of person that I'm really curious about our life in general and how we got here and karma, just everything that's like associated with the spiritual side of life. Mm. So um, I was fascinated with people that who remembered their past lives and I wanted to create something where the character was had that ability as well. So tell so. me about your main character, Evan Storm. What kind of man is he? Um, he's just a regular guy. He's a psychology teacher at Walsh Pierce High School. Um, you know, in the beginning of the book, he gets out of a relationship and, um, he's just kind and caring and he's totally different to the person he was in his previous life. Interesting. So, but after, so after encountering his nightmare doppelganger in waking life, Evan must accept there's no escaping from the cruel man he was in a previous lifetime. There's no therapy that can fix his soul, no medicine, nothing. That's quite a frightening idea to continually live the same nightmare of a previous life over and over again. Yeah, um, it is, because it's like, um, imagine living your worst nightmare every single day. Like It chases you and it's taunting you. Um, I mean, I think that, like, there would be no peace in my life if that had happened to me. Yeah, So I kind of, I feel bad for him. (laughs) You get quite involved in your characters, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So is Evan living this karma from his previous life? I mean, this simplistic description of karma tells us that we can alter our karma by doing good in our current life. Does this apply to Evan at all? Is his cycle redeemable? In the grand scheme of things, yes. Um... He is trying to, you know, make up for his wrongdoings in his previous life. Mm -hmm. And so that's what his journey is about. Um, And he also talks about it with his next door door neighbor about uh, karma and reincarnation and how to get rid of the bad karma. So um, there's a little bit of of a description of what he thinks karma is. And I think... um, I think if you, for his, for the second question, is his cycle redeemable? Um, I would say yes, but I think because the third book hasn't come out yet, um, I can't give away too much. <laughs> no, don't do that. But it's fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? Absolutely fascinating. I think that sometimes we, some, yeah, as you were saying, some people remember their past lives. I think some of, of us remember parts of our past lives, or we get the kind of a, a chink of a view of our past lives and to me that that's like deja vu you know when you remember something you think oh that's odd and to me that's yeah. remembering part of your past life or remembering what you were going to do in this life it, it's all incredible yeah yeah definitely so who is your writing inspiration is there a particular author that inspired you to write storm or in the thriller genre in particular uh my writing inspiration has always been jk rowling i i think she 
I think she did a really good job with um, creating Harry Potter and Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was in the seventh grade, um, I wrote my first book by hand. Right. And I still, ha I still have it. So I look back at it and I'm like, wow, I've come so far. Because um, it was, I would write in my English classroom because I was so... Um, I was so interested in where the story was going to go mm -hmm. and I wasn't, I wasn't a planner back then. So like I would just write and like pick up wherever I left off and continue writing. Whereas now I plan things. So since seventh grade, um, I've always looked up to her as somebody that who has been a success and I still continue to look up to her because she's done so much with her writing career and I hope I can, you know, become somebody like her down the road. And for my for the second question, um, to be honest, I don't even read uh, thriller books. Mm -hmm. um, so there isn't a particular author that inspired me to write Storm, but um, I was inspired by the show Scandal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's created by Shonda Rhimes, and um, there's this secret agency that um, she's created, which is called B613. So, in the book Storm, there is a, a agency called the Secret Eye Agency. So that was the inspiration for um, my book. But mm -hmm. book-wise, there isn't a particular author that made me um, write this book. Is Storm a one-off, or do you intend to write more in this genre or on this subject? Um, this is the first book in the series. So um, right now, there are three books that are going to come out. Oh, really? Um, but so, I, I mean, like, people ask me, is there going to be a fourth one? And I, I don't know. I don't have a storyline for that one. But for sure, there will be three books in the series. That's fantastic. So in addition, in addition to being a highly accomplished writer, you're also a passionate businesswoman running a, a women's clothing company with your younger sister. And I can imagine you sneaking out the back to write. Where is Capri's writing space? Quite honestly, I think it's just everywhere. <laughs> I like I have a desk in my room, so I'll write there or, or I'll, you know, write for an hour before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes in the past, I've, you know, gone outside in the backyard to get, like, you know, a fresh breath. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone into the backyard to, like, you know, get out of my normal space. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, like, you know, try to find inspiration there, let my mind wander. But it's sometimes it's hard, uh, you know, trying to do the writing portion of my life and then also running a business. But, you know, you have to kind of be uh, a good time management kind of person yes. to advocate different tasks and, you know, time to what you want to do. I know I get most of my inspiration when I'm out walking the dog. I mean, I can sit in front of the computer for hours yeah. and, 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 and drive myself crazy because I can't think of anything. And then I'll go outside, take him for a walk and, hey, presto, all the ideas start coming through. Exactly, exactly. It's like sometimes the inspiration comes from, you know, traveling, mm -hmm. uh, meeting new people, or just going somewhere different, because yes. it kind of uh, brings back maybe something that you were that you were familiar with when you were younger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's I, I agree with you, like your inspiration sometimes doesn't come when you're sitting in front of a computer, because, you know, that's like your regular routine. Exactly. Exactly. I've noticed on social media you've given recognition and thanks to your editor, Kristen. How important is it to have a great editor? What difference does it make in your opinion? Um, it, I, I really believe that every person who wants to become a successful author should have a great editor. Um, she worked with me when I first sent her my first draft of the book. And after I received the edits and her review and her feedback there was like a lot of things that needed to be changed in the book. Mm. So it's like, you know, you want to create a story that flows smoothly. You want to have characters that grow throughout the book yes. and an editor will help you define where the problem areas are in your writing because you as a writer, you're going to think um, it makes sense. You know, everything's flows smoothly because that's how you see it. Exactly. But from a reader's perspective, 
it's totally different. And I remember she said there was like a lot of head hopping in my first draft. Mm. And I didn't see it that way because, you know, I'm the author and I think it goes smoothly and, you know, it's not, uh, it's not annoying, Mm. but when somebody else reads it, you get their perspective and then you re, re then you reread your writing and you and then you start to notice what they're saying and so you make those changes because at the end of the day you want something that is great to offer to the world you don't want something that's kind of um you know just average and so i think a great editor helps you figure out where your problem areas are and then they help you fix that and so that's why kristen um has been really really great for editing I think you put it absolutely perfectly in the beginning of that answer when you said that to be a successful author, and, you know, it is successful, you've got to have your book edited properly. You, yes. you hit the nail on the head there. You've received, yeah. you've received some wonderful reviews for Storm, even before it was published, including from the opening chapter, this story forces you to read on to see what's going to happen next. And Capreet is an amazingly gifted writer and this book proved to be a page turner. I just couldn't put it down. It was brilliantly written. Well, what's been the best moment for you, Capreet? The first review or the first book sale and why? Those are really tough. I would honestly say it's the first review only because I got the first review before um, pre-orders of the book even started. Right. So when I got the first review, you know, I had a chance to see what somebody else would uh, say about the book. Mm. And so that was like the best feeling because it was a good review. <laughs> so I would have to go with, um, you know, the first review was the best moment. Mm. I mean, the first book sale was good too. Sure. But I think the review came first. So I guess I saw some total stranger liked my book. Yippee. <laughs> exactly because you you know you spent so much time and energy in writing this you want people to like what you write exactly exactly all right well where can book talk radio clubs listeners purchase store um they can purchase it through my website which is com. signed copies are exclusively available on my website but they can also for, uh, find storm on amazon kindle kobo google play barnes and noble nook and iBooks. But for iBooks right now, we're having issues with it. So at the moment, uh, we're trying to figure out how to get that book available for people that would like to read on iBooks. All right. Well, thank you, Capri. That was terrific. Please come back on Book Talk Radio Club when you finish your next book. I'd love to chat with you and hear more. In the meantime, good luck for the future. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Thank you, Capri. Thank you for having me, Claire. Sure.